In the morning, my friends, how are you today? Welcome back to our cozy hometown podcast from Bemidji, Minnesota. We've recorded this short study of God's Word just for you in this attractive carrying case, completely free. St. Mark's podcast is a part of a balanced breakfast in God's Word. Don't forget to round out your daily diet today and every day by reading the Bible, praying, and pondering the Word so that you may properly internalize it. If you like what you hear today, Share it with a friend. If you look in the podcast description on the app that you're using, in every episode, there is a share link for you to email or text to a friend. I've tried to make the link obvious. Let me know if it isn't at john.kirk at stmarksbemidji.org. Share it because it's studying the Word of God. And faith in Jesus and His perfect life, death, and resurrection comes by hearing the Word. And salvation from death and an eternity in hell comes to us by faith in Jesus alone. Why would you not tell everyone? I'm going to say a dirty word now. Death. We joke about it. We avoid it. We fear it. Shakespeare so colorfully called it the undiscovered country. We fear it because we don't know anyone who has come back to tell us what happens to our soul after death. It's so final. Or is it? God is the author of life, the final arbiter of who lives and who dies. The faithful in Jesus have nothing to fear from death because He told us what happens to us after death. Those who die in faith in Jesus and what He has promised us will find eternal happiness with Him. Don't believe me? Sweet. I don't trust me either. Go read the Bible, though, and believe. This week, we listen in to Luke 7, and Jesus demonstrates his power over death. He does this several times during his ministry to others, and of course, most famously shows his final victory over sin, death, and the devil on the cross in his resurrection. So drop that can of sea foam and open your Bible. You can't ride your snowmobile yet anyway. Let's listen to what today's devotion has in store for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Luke, in his Gospel, chapter 7, verses 11 to 17, reads, Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a city called Nain, and his disciples were going along with him, accompanied by a large crowd. Now, as he approached the gate of the city, A dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a sizable crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her, and he said to her, Do not weep. And he came up and touched the coffin, and the bearers came to a halt. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear gripped them all, and they began glorifying God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. This report concerning him went out all over Judea and in all the surrounding district. This is my text. In the name of Jesus, amen. How does all this work, really? Believe in Jesus and you won't die? Certainly is not happening. Everyone dies, even the best Christians die. So what advantage is there? Many would appreciate Jesus showing up at their deathbed and fixing things so they wouldn't die at all, or even get sick in the first place, for that matter. Utopia. Heaven on earth. Men have sought it from the beginning, but it is a false hope of the sinner, and it is not the word of God. Jesus had said, My kingdom is not of this world. Man sinned against God. The wages of sin is death. We all will die. That word of God stands. But that is not all that God said. Jesus said clearly, truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Never? But we all die, right? Yes, but remember, Jesus said, I will raise him up at the last day. 
We are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is in the resurrection. Keeping his word takes place through a genuine strong faith in that word of promise. When confronted with death, we say, my Savior is bigger than death, and he is going to raise me from the dead at the last day, just like he said. In Christ, life doesn't stop for death. Christ doesn't yield to the grave. He conquers it. He does not step out of the way, but casts death aside to say to his people, I say to you, arise. He doesn't yet say to you, do not weep, because you're still in a world of sorrow. But on the last day, he will wipe away every tear from your eye, and sorrow will be no more. And what about until that time? Well, those who die, trusting in the word and promise of Christ, are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence, and they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, nor shall the sun strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And the last day, St. Paul said, Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep, died. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. That's how it all works. Really. In the name of Jesus, amen. That's all there is for today, but we are so happy you took a few moments out of your busy day to listen to God's Word with us. Please consider subscribing to our podcast to hear more devotions like this, Monday through Friday, and to hear our Sunday sermons as well. We also cordially invite you to join us for church every week at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. If you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website at www.stmarksbemidji.org.